Hello fellow creators, did you know your outer world is just an extension of your inner world? Now you might be asking how is that possible or how does that work? When we take a look at the quantum mode of reality, we see something completely different. And Dr. Joe Dispenza breaks this down in a simple and easy to understand way, so you can really get to feel how everything going on in here is impacting everything going on out there. Elevated emotions did absolutely nothing, but when you say to them, now we want you to see the DNA unwind, thought, we want you to move into the elevated emotion of how you would feel if the DNA unwinds. Your brain is a record of your past up until this moment. The people you know, the people you've known, the places you live, the things you've done at different times, your brain is really a record of your past environment. So if you're trying to create a new future, then you better neurologically install the circuitry ahead. So you take the person and you say, okay, look, I know that you failed enough times at this. I know what it's like to be this way, but it's gonna take us 15 weeks, but we're gonna make slow, steady progress. And I want you to learn about this. This is what this is gonna do for you. Mm -hmm. And then when he gets his behaviors to match his intentions, not only is he installing the circuits because he's learning new things, but now when he has the experience, the experience is causing more neurons to enrich the circuits that he learned. Then he's beginning to feel a little bit like, hey, I can do this. So it's not only the brain, the brain, you cultivate a new mind right. by, by learning first and then you experience and enriches it, but then you begin to feel like it's possible. So it goes something like this. You learn something new, then you begin to make new choices. Uh -huh. New choices lead to new behaviors. Uh -huh. New behaviors lead to new experiences, and new experiences lead to new emotion. Our brain is a superconductor of consciousness, right? Our nervous system is what hooks us up to this infinite field. And <clears throat> if you look at an atom, if you take an atom and uh, you look at it very closely, an atom is 99.99, 13 nines after that point, 99.9999% okay. nothing. It's empty space, it's frequency, it's information, it's nothing materially, it's point zero 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 one percent particle matter. So everything is more nothing than something. So if you think about everything made up of atoms and particles, then there is an invisible field that's holding all of this together, that's potentials. Now, when you and I are living by the hormones of stress, when you and I are living by the fight or flight nervous system, we're living by those very limited emotions, anger and fear and sadness and suffering and guilt. The brain naturally does something very unique. When we live by those emotions, we function as materialists. We feel separate from possibility because when we're in that heightened state, our senses are telling us the way reality is. So we become focused on three things, the body, the environment, and time. That's how we live our life. So we begin to obsess about our bodies, our hairstyles, our clothes. We obsess about things, oh. our cars or whatever. We obsess about time. We become enslaved to this dimension. Now, what we're really saying is when we function as materialists, we keep all of our attention on that point zero 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 one percent of reality. Interesting. And we That's... begin to omit the 99.99% of possibility that's waiting for us to experience. Can you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet, but you've thought about enough times in your mind that your brain is literally changed to look like that future event has already happened? So I like to use mental rehearse because uh, it just is a kind of a simpler way for people to get into it. So it's not enough to just do that though. You have to begin to emotionally embrace that future event before it's actually made manifest. So much so that you begin to convince your body emotionally that that future event has already happened now. So much so that you begin to signal new genes in new ways to change your body to look like the event has happened. When your brain it's and body vacation. are physically changed to look like the event has happened, then in the quantum field, the event has already happened because there's physical evidence. Now, when you get to this point where you're in the state where you've experienced it enough times that you know that you know, get ready because 
the event is going to find you. It'll happen. It's going to come in a way that you least expect. It's going to come in a way that you would never predict. And why is that? Because if you can predict it, it's nothing new. It's got to be new and unusual. And now you have a two-way relationship with this quantum field because you're not living in the hormones of survival where you're trying to predict the next moment based on the past moment. You are trusting in an outcome beyond your senses. And because you're trusting in the outcome, you're in an elevated state and you feel connected to something greater. And you would never try to figure out how it's going to happen or when it's going to happen. You're too busy being it. The moment you try to figure out when it's going to happen, you just return back to the old self. So the beauty here is that when you change your brain and body to look like the event has already happened, they're no longer a record of the past now. Now they're a map to the future. And to live by this law, is to live by the quantum law, which says the environment is an extension of your mind. Mm. If you truly change your mind, there should be evidence in your life. You have three types of stresses, physical, chemical, and emotional, which means you have three types of ways to create balance back in the body, physically, chemically, and emotionally. Okay. Now, most people will you know, take the chemical route and they'll use medications uh, but they're not changing their lifestyle. They're not doing anything different right. physically. They're not, they're not getting over their emotional states. And so you just can't rely on just one element of those. We have to work on all three of those. So I always, when, when I study spontaneous remissions, one of the things that I noticed that people had in common is when they were healed, they knew they were better. They didn't have to take the test. They said, I know ah. I'm better. And, and the doctor would say, how would you know? And they say, because I know. And of course, they went back for their their you know, tests, their blood values, their scans or whatever, and of course they were better. So when you know that you know, I call that enlightenment. Enlightenment is when you know that you know. So, yeah. so um, it was interesting because uh, they had some common things. Uh, and then my interest was, they, once I was able to demystify that miraculous healing and figure out the commonalities, the next most important thing was, can I reproduce it? Right. So then once I knew those things, then let's see if we can take people that are, have conditions and let's see if we can change it. And I'm happy to say in the last two years, you know, and that's why I wrote Breaking was, the Habit, yeah. because we've seen people heal themselves of cancer intentionally, of, uh, uh, of many, many people from MS, from lupus, oh uh, from Hashimoto syndrome, from wow. all kinds of crazy diabetes because we can make thought more real than anything else. That's the privilege, right? Uh. So <clears throat> when you begin to, as an example, if you begin to think about telling your coworker off and you're driving to work and you're thinking about, oh, I'm going to say this and I'm going to do this. No, no, better yet, I'll write an email. And mm -hmm. you run through the scenario right. in your head and then you say, no, 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 I'm going to go to the boss and then we're going to talk about it. And you're rehearsing mentally yeah. a new way of being. There'll come a moment that the thought that you're thinking will literally become the experience in your brain. The moment that happens, you begin to produce the chemistry as if that future event is happening to you now. And your body is the unconscious mind, is living in that future now, which means your body literally is physiologically changing. By the time you get to work, you're a walking, talking, crazy person. And all you did was drive to work. We could say that you moved into a new state of being, right? right? So you and I have been hypnotized and conditioned into believing that we need a reason for joy, that we need a reason for gratitude. That's cause and effect. Mm. Wait for the experience to do something before you feel. Mm. That's very Newtonian physics, very cause yeah. and effect. I'm saying to give thanks ahead of the experience, so much so that you convince your body emotionally that it's already done because gratitude means it's already done. You give thanks when it happened. So if your body is the unconscious mind, and you can bring up gratitude ahead of the event, then your body begins to believe that that future event is already done. The environment is no longer signaling the gene. You're signaling the gene ahead of the environment. Now, it's no longer cause and effect. Now you're causing an effect. So nice. when we begin to do that properly, the beauty behind it is then as we become quantum creators. So people would say, oh, that's nonsense. And you would say, you're absolutely correct. We know from some experiments that have been done that if you know, you, you take a group of people and you have them set three vials of DNA in front of them, right? And you say to them, these are expert prayers, people who really can affect, you know, something. They, you say to them, now, with all of your intention, we want you to see this DNA wind or unwind. 
and you have these people practice the experiment and you check that DNA at the end of the experiment, the power of intention does absolutely nothing to the DNA. Thought does nothing to change the DNA. Huh. You say to those people, now, we want you to move into an elevated mood. We want you to feel gratitude or joy or goodwill. We want you to just emanate this feeling out into the quantum field and do it over and over again. If you check the DNA at the end of that experiment, nothing's happened to the DNA either. The, really? the emotion, elevated emotion, did absolutely nothing. But when you say to them, now, we want you to see the DNA unwind, thought. We want you to move into the elevated emotion of how you would feel if the DNA unwinds. 25% of the DNA unwinds at a remote location. So our thoughts tend to be electrical in nature and our feelings tend to be magnetic in nature. And how we think and feel broadcasts an electromagnetic signature that influences every single atom in your life. The thought sends the signal out and the feeling draws the event back. Now, if thinking and feeling creates a state of being, the quantum field responds to who you're being, not what you think or what you feel, but the combination, the combination of the two. Because that begins to broadcast the signature. Welcome back, fellow creators. So I hope that paints a picture of how your inner and outer world are really one. Now, what I want to emphasize is when you take a look at the material world, that's just 1% of what's going on. And it is important to acknowledge the material world, what's going on around you, the material things you own and everything like that. I understand that. Here's the mistake I don't want you to make. I don't want you to say, that's it. This is just the material world. This is what defines me, the 1%, I'm done. Think of it like this. This is just what you have right now. But 99% of the possibilities in the future as we talked about in other videos, seeing the future are yours. There's so many possibilities out there that the universe can grant us. It's amazing. So what do you want to create with your subconscious mind? Think of it. All the possibilities that we can see, do, experience. Who do you want to be? What do you want to do? How do you want to change your inner world so you can start changing your outer world and know that it's possible. The most exciting thing is to know that the unseen is possible, that all these possibilities exist in the quantum level and we can access them. We can change what's going on outside by changing what's going on within. And that is tremendous power and tremendous responsibility. So ask yourself today, sit there and really go over it. What do I want to experience? What possibilities do I want to create as realities for my life? And know that it's infinite. And that makes it just so exciting. So be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, like this video, leave me a comment below. And thank you so much for watching. Take care.